attention, expecting to get something from them. Then Peter said, silver or gold I do not have, but what I do have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ, walk. Taking him by the right hand, he helped him up. And instantly the man's feet and ankles became strong. He jumped to his feet and began to walk. Then he went with them into the temple courts, walking and jumping and praising God. When all the people saw him walking and praising God, they recognized him as the same man who used to sit begging at the temple gate, called Beautiful. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. My beloved friends, this ends the reading of the word of God. Let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, here we are. The third Sunday in April that you have given us. You have brought us to this Bethel spot, not by chance. But I firmly believe this day there is a word to touch every heart, to touch every life in this sanctuary. Help us to be willing participants. Thank you, God. So now, dear God, as your word goes forth with power, with clarity and anointing, cover us right now. Speak new life. And Father God, help us not to be here the same way we came. But I firmly believe your word will not return void. But every purpose that it has been intended for, it will be fulfilled. So thank you now for your Holy Spirit. Come, Lord Jesus, and strengthen us all. For many of us, we've had a trying week. Some on the verge of even giving up. Somebody perhaps even cried out, Lord, how long? But thank you, God, for reminding us this morning about faith. Have your way now. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And amen. amen. To God be the glory. Amen. amen. For all God has done. Faith that makes us strong. My beloved friends, we're living in a time when it seems that men and women are losing their faith. When so many people are struggling with their faith. For some people are saying that it's hard to believe in a God that they cannot see. It is hard to believe in a God that seems to be so far away. It is so hard to believe in a God that, that seems archaic and not relevant. It is hard to believe in a God that seems foreign. Well, my beloved friends, the enemy wants our faith to dwindle. The enemy wants our faith to decrease on all levels. Anybody been there before? The enemy wants our faith to even become obsolete. The enemy wants our faith to seem impossible. The enemy wants our faith to seem reminiscent as if it all is a lie. The enemy wants our faith to be dead and no action. Can I get a witness? But how many of you know that God has not given us a spirit of fear? Can I get a witness for him this morning? But my God has given us a spirit filled with power, one of love and self-discipline. Somebody ought to give the Lord some praise. My beloved friends, more than ever we need faith that is rooted and anchored in God, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. This faith should be strong regardless of the trials of life, regardless of our setbacks in life, regardless of our frustrations in life, regardless of our disappointments in life. 
we all need faith. And that faith should be strong this morning. Can I get a witness? This faith does not just happen. But this faith is developed. This faith is strengthened as we grow in our relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. How in the world do we expect our faith to grow if we never get in touch with God? How do we expect our faith to grow if we never call on the name of Jesus? How do we expect our faith to grow if the Savior does not even know who we are? Can I get a witness? But we always want the Lord to answer. But we never take the time to humble ourselves. In our periphery before us this morning, Peter heals a lame man. The Bible makes it clear this man who was lame from birth was being carried to the temple called Beautiful, where he was put every day to beg from those going into the temple courts. When he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for money. Peter looked straight at him as John did. Peter said, look at us. So the man gave them his attention. He was expecting Canaan to get something in return. Then Peter said, silver or gold, I do not have. But what I do have, I give to you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. Amen. Tell the Lord, thank you. Anybody in here this morning knows the Lord will meet your need. Come on and get the Lord some prayer. Three points this morning. One, it is important to understand faith through Jesus Christ, our Savior, our needs are able to be met. Can I get a witness in here this morning? The young man was expecting to be blessed one way, but our Savior met his needs with what he really needed. Anybody been there before? Tell him I thank you. See, the young man, according to scripture, was weak. He had to be carried. But God spoke a transforming word. He spoke a healing word that made him stronger. Amen. Anybody ever been weak before? Well, God makes us strong. I need a witness in here. Can I get a witness? Tell the Lord, thank you. All of us, we have weaknesses. All of us, we have our times of weakness. But it's at our lowest moment that God is able to pick us up. My beloved friends, Peter said, silver, a gold I do not have. But what I do have, I give to you. Hallelujah. I mean, you know, sometimes we try to find things to give. But we got to learn how to give what we have. Tell the Lord, thank you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. They did not stay sick or murmur and complain. But they cried out in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. Anybody in Canaan knows that there is power in the name of Jesus? Oh, I need a witness in here this morning. If you know there's power in the name of Jesus, you ought to get a Lord to pray. Anybody here knows when you call the name of Jesus, the enemy will flee this Lord. At the name of Jesus, the enemy is defeated. At the name of Jesus, the enemy is trampled on. At the end, glory be to God in the name of Jesus. The enemy gotta leave you alone. Anybody been there before? Hey, if I'm not crazy, I just know the power of God. Hallelujah, anybody knows that God is able to Hallelujah. The enemy must flee. Taking him by the right hand. Peter helped him up. And instantly the man's feet and his ankles became strong. Somebody ought to say thank you. That's what faith will do for us. If we want to see God move on our behalf, then we must learn how to get up 
and put our faith into action. Our faith can will never become strong by being dead. Our faith will never become strong by just sitting here. Our faith will never become strong by never stepping out. Hallelujah. And say, Lord, here am I. Hallelujah. Our faith will never become strong by not trusting the promises of God. We must learn, Canaan, how to wait. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And Brother Benjamin may tarry. Wait on it. Hallelujah. How many of you know God will bring it to pass? You got to learn how to wait on it. And how many of you know as we're waiting, God is working it out? Glory be to God for our good. Somebody ought to say thank you. Second of all, on this journey, if we want our faith to make us strong, I know I'm going to get in trouble, but it's all right. We got to be mindful of our environment. Amen. Tell the Lord, thank you. If we want our faith to get us to make us strong, we got to be mindful of our environment. Sometimes, Cain and our environments are filled with distractions. They're filled with doubters. They're filled with haters. They're filled with blockers. They're filled with backstabbers. Filled with persons that are nearly satisfied and going nowhere. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. We must surround ourselves, Canaan, with persons that are maturing in the faith. Can I get a witness? Persons that know that there is a God. Persons that are credible witnesses as to what God has done in their lives. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, I don't need to know your story. But neighbor, you got it, I gotta tell you mine. Tell them all thank you. Say, neighbor, I know what God is able to do. Somebody ought to get a Lord to pray. Thank you, God. With the lame man. Peter said, look at us. It is important that we understand Peter was not focused on himself. So often we get caught up with ourselves. Me, 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 me. And I, I, I. Peter was not trying to take the place, brother Otto, of Jesus. He was not trying to take credit for what was getting ready to happen. He was trying to make sure that the beggar had the right focus and the right mentality. Peter and John were simply vehicles willing to be used for the upbuilding of the kingdom. Somebody ought to say thank you. They were simply believers in the power of the resurrected Savior. And if our faith is to make us strong, then we gotta learn how to be mindful of our environment. We gotta have the right focus. We must have the right mentality. The Reverend Geddes every now and then we gotta take self inventory and learn how to cut some folk loose. Amen. It's all right. Uh, tell the Lord thank you. Hallelujah. You know how it is on Sunday we one way and the rest of the week we another. Tell the Lord thank you. But if you walk in up the King's Highway, you gotta be mindful of who's walking with you. Cause everybody who's cheering you on is not for you all the time. Amen. Hallelujah. Even Jesus had to clear a crowd of non-believers. Amen. If we're gonna grow strong in the faith, Hallelujah, we got to learn, glory be to God, that everybody is not there for us. And the best part about it, don't get caught up in that mess. But learn not to let it hinder your praise and to hinder your work for the kingdom. Because at the end of the day, man or woman, glory be to God, doesn't have a heaven or hell to put you in. It's all up to Jesus. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbors to live and be mindful of your environment. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Lastly, if our faith is to become strong, we got to be willing 
Reverend Scott to get up from the gate. I'm going to say that one again. If our faith is to become strong, we must be willing to get up from the gate. I heard you, Reverend Davis. She said it's hard sometimes. Yes, it is. But sometimes at the gate, Canaan, we become comfortable. Sometimes at the gate, it becomes a pattern of life. Sometimes at the gate, it becomes too easy. Sometimes at the gate, we become too despondent. Sometimes at the gate, we become too too dependent. Sometimes at the gate, we feel that this is how it's supposed to be. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. But my beloved friends, the blind beggar teaches us because he thought this was his norm. But when he finally got up from the gate, instantly his feet and his ankles became strong. The Bible said he jumped up on his feet and the Bible declares he began to walk. He went into the temple courts. He was now walking. He was jumping and praising God. Many persons were astonished and wondered what in the world happened. But how many of you know when God makes a change in your life? Can I get a witness? When God meets you at the gate, don't you know to make a difference in your life? Somebody ought to say thank you. Anybody ever been at the gate? God made a difference. Hallelujah. Peter made it clear. It wasn't through his power, but it was through the power of the resurrected Savior. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Anybody in Canaan knows it's the same God who took care of you yesterday. The same God who's working it out right now. Anybody knows what I'm talking about? Somebody ought to praise it. Tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, it's the same God that brought you out yesterday. It's the same God that is able to do it again. I stopped by this morning to challenge somebody. Since the queen, it's time to get up from the gate. You've been at the gate too long. Hallelujah. Y'all know how it is on the airplane. Sometimes we're at the gate too long. Somebody ought to say thank you. Come on and give the Lord some praise. It's time to get up and tell the world, I'm leaving doubt at the gate. I'm leaving fears at the gate. I'm leaving, glory be to God, everything that is not of God at the gate. I'm leaving all my hurts. I'm leaving my despair. Hallelujah. I'm leaving all of my shoulds, coulds, woulds at the gate. And I'm saying, here am I, Lord. Hallelujah. It's time for somebody to say, I'm getting up like Jesus with all power. The same healing power that transformed this lame man. The same healing power that gave this man the strength to believe. Hallelujah. He's able to do it in our lives. Amen. Amen. He's able to make us strong. Hallelujah. One of my favorite parables. You've heard it before. One day, a donkey fell into a pit. The animal cried and whined, Brother Sam, for hours. While his owners tried to figure out what they were going to do. Yeah. Finally, the farmer decided that the animal was old, so sadly. And the pit needed to be covered up anyway. He said, I just buried old donkey right in there. He got a shovel and started filling in the pit, sister Arlene. The donkey kept on wailing. But then fell silent. And after an hour of furious shoveling, the farmer paused to rest. To his amazement, he saw his old donkey jump up out of the pit and trotted away. At first, when the donkey realized what was happening, he cried out to Sajina even more pitifully. But then 
the wise animal came up with a plan came. As the farmer threw the shovel of dirt, all the animal every round, he would keep going higher and higher and higher. And finally, he got to where he was able to get out of the pit. And I'm telling you this morning, Canaan, that's what faith Will have us to get out of the mess that we've been in. And we too will be able to say, like the donkey, every round of Christ goes higher and higher and higher. But we can only say that when we know that faith is an integral part of our lives. And at the end, Persons will look at us and say, I know that was the same person who was down. I know that was the same person, hallelujah, that lost her praise, but now back in church. I know that's that same person who said God isn't real. But look at her now in the front row. Look at him on the front row. The enemy will look at you and say, I know you claim your life is a living testimony. But where is God in your life? But then you're able to look them in the eye. And you're able to say through many dangers, toils and snares. I didn't make it on my own. But I thank God that he made my faith stronger. And because of my faith, I'm able to tell the world today, I can make it. I can tell the world, they lose everything, but the same God who gave it to me before, anybody been there before? He's the same God who's able to do it again. Somebody ought to say thank you. The same God that raised me up before, he's able to put a new song in my heart. He's able to lift me off my bed of affliction. Can I get a witness? It's the same God who healed me before, who is able to do it again. Come on and tell the Lord, thank you, man. The same God. Yeah. But we gotta learn how to get up from the gate. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. I don't know what I'm speaking to this morning. Hallelujah. But the Holy Spirit is saying it's time to get up from the gate. The gate is too comfortable for you. Hallelujah. The gate is too familiar for you. But God is saying, I got a good work for you. But you got to get up from the gate this morning. Can I get a witness? And when God gets you up from the gate, can I get a witness? You'll be able to get up like the lame man. You'll be able to tell the good news of Jesus. Everybody will not preach. Everybody will not sing. Everybody will not pray. But whatever God is leading you to do. It's time to get up and tell the world, for God I live and for God I die. All because God has made my faith strong. So in the name of Jesus, we all can sit on the sidelines, whining and complaining. But God says, I need laborers in the vineyard. Hallelujah. So it's time for us to challenge somebody to get up from the gate. If you feel you've been at the gate too long, just stand to your feet. Now don't stand because somebody else stand. But I want you to be honest. 
And we all have a different gate. Hallelujah. I don't want you to stand because your neighbor is standing. But I want you to let the Holy Spirit speak to you today. Somebody is saying it's too comfortable, Red. This is my place of familiarity. But God is saying what is hindering you from moving from this gate. Have your way, God. God is saying, don't you know I'm with you? God is saying, I'm able to walk with you. Somebody say, but Lord, right now it's comfortable for me at this gate. But God says, I got greater work for you. Hallelujah. God is saying, I got a greater testimony for you. God is saying, I got a greater will for your life. But right now you're comfortable. And just like I spoke a healing word to the blind man, to the lame man, to the deaf man. God is saying, I'm speaking it to you today. Challenge somebody in the sanctuary. You don't have to know what he or she is going through. But I just want you to, as the Holy Spirit speaks to you, say it's time to get up from the gate. God has work for you. So my sister, my brother, God is speaking to you. What are you waiting on to listen and to answer? Will you do that today? Challenge somebody. As the Holy Spirit speaks to you. Speak to somebody and say, why are you still at the gate? Don't be afraid. Challenge somebody. Or maybe you just want to challenge yourself. And say, self, it's time to get up from the gate. Stop making excuses. Can I get away? See, Reverend Garrett is comfortable at the gate. Can I get a witness? It's familiar at the gate. But God is saying it's time to step out. I got work for you to do. Challenge somebody today. Challenge that loved one. So we're going to walk together. We're going to struggle together in Jesus' name. We're going to fight together in Jesus' name. Encourage somebody today. Don't turn a deaf ear, but allow the Holy Spirit to speak. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You don't need to have all the right words. Don't worry about how you put it together. You don't have to worry about how you got it together. All you got to do is step out. Yes. The gate is comfortable. But just like that old donkey in front of the class, he shook off the dirt and he got up to another level. Are you willing to shake it off? Are you willing to shake it off? And tell the world for God I
been hearing the word of God. Maybe there is one who wants to give his or her life to Christ. Secondly, maybe there is one who wants to join it as a member. The invitation has been extended. Is there one today?